I first came to Florida, it wasn't for the state's glittering theme parks or to live that salt life at the beach, but for the monastic lifestyle and doomed optimism of graduate school. <laughs> now, thankfully, just a few months into the toil of my first term, already desperate for a break from the daily grind and coffee grounds of books and papers, my extended family planned a group trip a day's drive away. Now, at the time, I was living on a graduate student's salary, which is to say, no salary. So I departed on that last vestige of the weary traveler, the discount bin of the great American road trip, the Cadillac of desperation, a Greyhound bus. Okay, okay, let's start with the bus. What do you think? Filthy and falling apart? Maybe a little dangerous? Honestly, it was fine. It's not pristine, some weathered plastic and stains. It's not your first choice for transportation. But we're all riding Greyhound here. We're all dealing with the results of life choices that frankly weren't our first choices. But thanks to Greyhound, we're able to process that reality at about 17 bucks a ride. My first stop was at the old Union Station in Ocala. Here we're held in what feels somehow both claustrophobic and like an airplane hangar. High ceilinged and cold and locked in shoulder to shoulder like cattle, waiting for our buses to arrive so we can be released. It was a bit unnerving, like the opening scene of a zombie flick or the moment right before the apocalypse starts. But if anything can prepare you for the severe lack of resources and desperate, barren future of the apocalypse, it's graduate school. But here I met a young couple, newlyweds from Alabama, but they may as well have been newborns from Alabama. Both 17 and wide-eyed and of slight builds. They seem tentative, anxious even, if hopeful, and clearly trying to escape some unspoken past and start anew. We shared stories of being from small southern towns and how you couldn't stub your toe without somebody talking about it. And they told me they weren't sure if they had enough money to take their final bus to the Florida Panhandle. They needed this to work out, a new start. And I remember even then being worried for these wonderfully optimistic people, broke but full of hope, just light on plans. I still think about them all the time, and I hope that they made it to the coast. My next stop was all of eight miles down the road. Little more than a, a patch of dirt across from a weathered truck stop. A hundred yards away, you could see the remains of an old citrus stand. It's fading orange paint and hand-lettered signs, a reminder of America's roadside attraction past. Easily overlooked, but the oranges were still good. Our driver huffs that this is our last stop for real food for a while. Our driver, a, a gruff man with a white mustache and a gut that somehow, despite all odds, keeps his buttoned-down uniform shirt secured in place. A man who looks like Mr. McFeely from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, uh, if you left Mr. McFeely out in the sun too long, melting in the Florida heat. Uh, he seems pretty pissed we're even on his bus, and he's especially concerned about the time as if this wasn't the same stretch of road he ping-ponged up and down, back and forth for days, weeks on end. 15 minutes, he'd yell. Like a couple extra moments of pork rinds and Coca-Cola time couldn't hurt, right? 
but his only job was to keep us on time. Well, okay, it was also to not crash the bus, but tell me, honestly, would any of you even miss a beat at the breaking news, 75 Florida men killed in mysterious Greyhound accident. The uh, Vegas odds for that end for Florida man are about three to one. But there he was, standing outside, muttering to himself, get on the goddamn bus. No food on my bus, he yelled. But why did we even stop if we can't bring food? Watching strangers shotgun cheap hot dogs and day-old cold-cut sandwiches is the right level of demoralizing for this experience. But it's perfect for the clock. Because that's the thing. Our adventure was his routine. Our anticipation for our final destination was just the next leg of his trip. He was there to keep us on the road, safely and on time. But first, we had to get on the goddamn bus. The last person I met on this trip was a solo traveler who sat down beside me. A young woman with those girl next door looks straight out of central casting. She told me she was 15 and traveling to stay with her aunt and uncle for a while. She was sweet and unfazed, surprised I'd even ask. And they put you, you, on a greyhound by yourself. Sure, she shrugged, why not? and shortly fell asleep, even resting her shoulder on my, her head on my shoulder, a complete stranger. <laughs> and I, I guess that's trust or faith or a belief in your fellow man that quite frankly, I don't fully share. I, I guess it triggered a paternal streak in me. I mean, the world's not always a safe place. Florida has a history of trafficking and America, a, a, a culture of harassment that honestly made me worry for her. I watched, but, but rather than live in fear and frustration, she and her family, they chose to live in faith and trust, or maybe just need. But I watched as she got off the bus and waited for her ride that was not there waiting for her. And I hope that their trust was well placed. Now this story has not been about me crapping on Greyhound or the people on it. Because sure, it's easy to make jokes about Greyhound. It's known as being cheap and gritty and seemingly more outmoded as the days go on. People make easy cracks about the cross-section of humanity that choose to go Greyhound as a means of identifying and separating class in this country, of putting people down. And maybe you think that that's what I've been doing, but remember, I was on that bus too. Because while I observed their stories, somebody could look at me and say, Look at this jackass, sitting at the front of the bus, pretending to grade his papers. He thinks he's going somewhere. The only thing on display is his arrogance. But I was on that bus too. Because aside from that trip to visit family, I didn't know where I was going. I, I, outside of that trip, I, I, I didn't know. I, I, I was a mere six months from when I would quit graduate school forever. Myself disillusioned and drifting. And now here we are, like a dozen years later, and I still don't know where I'm going. I'm still on that bus. But I'm glad I took that trip, and not just for the people that I met, not for the hope for the future, or the, the pragmatism of everyday life, or the belief that things would turn out for the best, but because any time I need it, I know that I have a ticket with my name on it. And I hope that someday I reach the coast.
Gabriel Tierney.